Morning folks, welcome along to a lovely looking Monday. You know, nothing gives me more pleasure than racking up the shutter doors as loud as possible before eight o'clock in the morning for certain numpties that live in the yard. <laughs> so, uh, slight digression. We've got this great big uh, gate on the front of the yard and uh, one of the lads who lives in one of the flats keeps being an arsehole and closing it all the time. So when you come down in your car, you have to stop and open the gate. It's nothing to do with him. He just rents a flat. It's nothing to do with his yard. But uh, yeah, his bedroom curtains were shut this morning. So I opened and then closed and then opened the shutter doors just to, uh, you know, give a little bit back. So I've shut down this morning early because we need the HLT on. I forgot to do it yesterday because I spent all day uh, cooking frigging curries after watching Big Secu's uh, most recent release of videos where he makes a couple of uh, British Indian restaurant curries. So I got the bug straight away and started doing it. So go and check out his channel. Boom bitches! Anyway, today we're making curry takeaway style or BIR, British Indian restaurant style. In the UK, takeaway is massive, especially Indian takeaway uh, from that region because we love that kind of food. I don't know, can you see that shit? Can you see that shit? Alright, it might not be that easy to see. Made by my own fair hand with my own fair pan. The only thing left to do is have a little taste. It smells really good. It's Big Secu at Secu.com But he's a very funny chap. And the curries were actually really good. So uh, anyway, that to one side. We need to brew today. I didn't get the water on yesterday, so I've come down to do that this morning. And also, we've got Gemma's brother, Jack, uh, working with me today, so I'm gonna set him about on the scaffolding by the canal to excavate the footings for this brickwork while I brew. So, it should all be good in the wood. So I'm just gonna turn the water on, shoot home, pick everybody up, and then come back and we will commence the vlog and a triple brew day is afoot. So we've got Jackie boy next door. He started the excavation. I'll take you through shortly. Um, but until that happens, I have to relocate some of this vacant that was carbonated. So this is obviously the keg vacant. Because I uh, don't have a bright beer tank, we just hook up these tanky fittings and uh, carbonate via head pressure one cask or one keg at a time. Seems to do the job. The, uh, the regulator's just set at uh, 15 psi. Leave it for two or three days. That seems to do the trick, and then once it goes into the beer cellar, uh, it's obviously hooked up to the gas in there, which is closer to 24 PSI, and if it's short on carbonation, it quickly puts the gas into the beer, sat at 12 degrees, remember. And uh, yeah, it'll maintain its equilibrium in there, where it needs to be, I think it's about 20 PSI. Um, so essentially, essentially, we just have to hook up these pegs. I usually do about six or nine at a time, and uh, put them on CO2. A couple of three days, and in a week you can have a whole pallet carbonated. It's really not as difficult as you might imagine. So that's the next three. What I'll do now is just pop some plastic caps on top of the Sankey fittings to prevent any dirt ingress and uh, give them a quick spray with a sanitizer. And that's it. They are ready to go. So we've got the HLT sat at 29 degrees. It hasn't raised much since I came and turned it on this morning. We're about an hour later. 
Whether I'm going to get round to a brew day to, today or not is, uh, is debatable. It's in the lap of the element gods. But I do have plenty of other things to do while I'm here. I want to get the cask washer plumbed in at the top of the brewery so we don't have to drag it out here every time. Now, the soil part that comes out of the toilet and what have you does have a trap inlet, a waste inlet, already there. There used to be a sink up there in bygone days. So we're just going to reintroduce another waste to that and run the cask outlet into it. And there's also, because there was a sink up there of sorts, there's also a water supply up there that we can tap off as well. So we'll get that done today while we're waiting for... Oh, we're waiting for the HLT to, you know, pull his friggin' finger out. Monday migraine or something. So this is the area of interest for me, for the cask washer to live. There's the door. So we just bring the casks in, pop the shives and keystones, bang them on the rinse. And then if we just have a couple of pallets here, then all the casks are rinsed when they come into the brewery. And then when we need them, we can just go caustic acid, caustic rinse, acid, fill. Job done. So I need to firstly remove this table, which is of no use to us anymore, practically. All the other bits and bobs that we've got on here need to be shifted also. And uh, this is the old uh, glass washer from the brew shed. The small brew shed that we had. Ironic that we've now got a smaller glass washer in the big brew shed, but this is very temperamental. The peristaltic pumps on it are about shot, and uh, one of the heating elements doesn't work. So I think it's pretty much scrap like. I could fix her up. It's a project for someone, I might stick it on eBay, or if anybody wants to buy it off me, make me an offer, then come and collect it. Like I say, it works, but. It's in a varying amount of disrepair, so if you know what you're doing with electrics, this might be the project for you. And down here, I think I showed you this last week, down there is the inlet or the outlet for the waste pipe and the blue pipe here is the water. It also comes down behind that door as well, which is the one I think I'm going to use. Unless I can pop a decent tap on there, that might be in the right position actually. Anyway, we'll see. We'll come back when all of this is miraculously cleared and cleaned up. Well, how does that bloody look? I think it looks tip top. So we've plumbed in down here. All I need to do is fetch a water pipe across to this tap, which, as you can see, works. And uh, yeah, she'll plug into there. Might replace that socket with a waterproof one as well, just to be on the safe side. They're not too expensive, but another job bites the dust. Oh, hey. So we've got the pumps on the go for cleaning the tank. We've got this pump on the go for, well we will have in a minute, for sanitising the plate chiller. And we're at 76 degrees, just about to mash in. And the time is, if you'll bear with me for a second while I get my phone out to have a look, it's 12.23. So hopefully we'll be able to get all of the jobs done in here and brewed up before 5 o'clock tonight. It's a bit of an ask. Well, we're ticking along, boys and girls. We've got the mash in. Not sure what time it is, but I think we're approaching 3 o'clock, so Gemma will be along soon for the car. We've almost completed the sparge. There's just a couple, maybe a hundred litres to go. We've got Jack upstairs, grafting big time. He's up there, look. Uh, he's putting us all to shame as well. He's dug all this friggin' uh, foundation, this footing out, before dinner time. He's making me look like I don't work as hard all of a sudden, isn't he? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll go and have a look what he's achieved this morning, which uh, well, I'm pleased with what he's done, if I'm honest. I think any other man would be. Oh, the garden's coming along lovely. Check it out, look at that. They're nice, aren't they? 
Dicentra, I think they're called. Yeah, anyway, look. He's filled the bag. And if I jump down here, oh goodness me. We're all dug out this side. We've found as well that the foundations for the wall actually stop around there, but we do have the original boundary fence posts. Can you see? Timber fence posts, look, and the concrete that uh, was holding them up. So we're just gonna sort of follow that line. That's obviously the boundary line that's most important. And then all this side's excavated and he's filled the bag, so there's just this little section that's uh, spare. So the plan is to construct the low retaining wall with engineering bricks. I want to use the blue kind, I think they look really good. And then I'm going to build four pillars, and then in between two of the pillars, one either side of the tree, we'll be installing the iron railings with the badass HB logo in there and also the gates will go in at the side of the uh, little dray run if you like because we have to give this a run for its money boys so it's been sat on there I've used it once or twice to cut a bit of wood uh, but it's really primarily for cutting cutting steel with when we get round to it yeah, so I'm going to just crack on with the brew day now, otherwise I will uh, get distracted doing another job, which I shouldn't really do. Talking of distractions, look what arrived over the weekend. A little parcel with a neck oil clone and uh, this bad boy, and grapefruit IPA, both bottled off the keg. And it's from Mark, the chap who came over from Ireland. Uh, thanks for making the effort to come and see us at the pub. I had a great night. Uh, I have a couple of my beers here for you. Feel free to put them on your YouTube channel. Many thanks from Northern Ireland. Mark Cooper. P.S. I'll soon have another one to send you. It's not ready yet. Well, I look forward to trying these beers, buddy. Um, I might even crack them open tonight because they are, after all, bottled from the keg. Friggin' rice. Young Jack has gone home with Gemma to get some tea, and I'm left here. Well, I'm not left. Kind of said you finish it far, but but I'm here to finish off the brew because uh, some prat didn't put the HLT on Sunday morning, so I had to come down early, as you know, to turn it on, and that meant I didn't mash in until 10 to 1. But it's 20 past five now, and uh, well, actually, it's a little later than that. Yeah, it's 5:41, and uh, we're amid the transfer, which is a good thing, right? So I think another half an hour will be transferred. Another half an hour will be washed up. I'll be on before seven. That's it. That's it. I'll be on before seven. Woohoo! As you know, who enjoys a bit of the crack? Yes, in more than one way. Um, I'm, I'm talking female crack, but, you know. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm talking jokes. Oh my gosh. I always gave the game away then, didn't I? So, excuse the vulgarities. Uh, while we're waiting for that beer to transfer and chill down, I thought I'd take this opportunity to uh, 
It's not been in my possession more than more than 12 hours. Uh, to sample the delights of Mark's neck oil clone at 4.3%. Well, why the frig not? It's gone five o'clock and I've got an half hour's wait on my hands. That smells pretty close, mate, that does. We have neck oil on the bar in the brew shed. It's uh, one of our best sellers. I'm somewhat reluctant to keep it there because of the Heineken deal that they've done, but one should not cut off their nose to spite their face, quite frankly, and uh, it sells. Wow, look at that. And it's a good beer as well, let's not knock it, it is a good freaking beer. Neck oil's lovely. If you've not tried it, try it. That, Mark, is a fine looking ale. It's crystal clear. This carbonation streaming, and this isn't a widgeted glass, of course. And it's bottled off the keg, so there's no sediment to worry about. Oh, it smells great. It smells bloody marvellous, mate. It's always a pleasure to have a home brew that knocks your socks off as soon as it hits your lips. That, sir is top fucking draw. So if you are starting a brewery over there in Ireland, as I know we talked about quite extensively last week, I think you'll be able to show them how it's done, bud. Mm. That is excellent. Excellent. Right, I'm gonna take it through there. I'm gonna enjoy supping on this, and I'm gonna to touch up my heat exchanger to make sure that uh, I don't overshoot the temperature transferring into the fermenter. And you'll notice I said heat exchanger really slowly then, because uh, last week I was talking about the cask washer and somebody thought I had a cat squasher. Must be my accent. You got that cat squasher, Stu? That's it, buddy. That's it. So we've got the beer in the tanks. I love saying that. The beer's in the tanks. I fucked up though. I've put USO5 into the bitter instead of Nottingham Ale yeast. Should be all right. Just be a little bit cleaner. Uh, I've also got the stainless steel out. We're going to be making uh, at the side of my kitchen area down there proper stainless steel shelving. And uh, I've forgotten what else I was going to say. So, off the back of that, folks, I'm going to sign off. It's gone seven o'clock. I'm a little bit late. Uh, but we'll be back in the morning for another brew day and uh, some more shenanigans at Harrison's Brewery. We'll see you then. Cheers.